Boker uh, Tov, everyone. We are uh, in a period which can be described as a period of din. Judgment. Huh? Judgment. You can call it that. Judgment. That is to say that uh, we're under times of tremendous amount of pressure and it's not uh, the pleasant kind of pressure. Sometimes you have pressure because of the simcha, which is uh, something which we look forward to, that kind of pressure. But we're under, under, unfortunately under pressure of threats and um, hatred. hatred and tragedy it's so history. what we do is when we have periods of din, what we do is we try to sweeten the din or to cancel the din. To sweeten the din is the most usual approach of Klal Yisrael, and that's called hamtakat din, sweetening the din. It means to put it on a back burner, to make the din weak. We cannot totally ignore it and cancel it. A perfect example of that is from Rosh Hashanah, Yom HaDin, until Shmini Yatzeres. It's a tkufa of din. Even Sukkot, which is a time of Simcha, it's still a period of din, but we have within the din a sweetening of the din. We have simcha in the din, which puts the din to a weaker position. And Baruch Hashem, generally speaking, that's very, very effective. But you see what happened this year, unfortunately, on the climax of the Simcha, Simcha's Torah, on Shabbos. <coughs> what happened on Simcha's Torah on Shabbos? We don't have to... We let our guard down, I think. Huh? We let our guard down? No, that's not what happened. That's just a detail. Hashem planned it out beforehand. So the din was not quieted. The din was executed. Unfortunately, but we have ways of combating the din and sweetening the din. The problem is that it doesn't always work, but we have to try, nevertheless, to do our best to sweeten the din. Now, what is one thing that Klal Yisrael does from the beginning of El until Shmini Yatzeres? After Shachris, after Mincha, after Maya of some Minhagin, he said, David Hashem Ori Vishi. There's no other capital of Tillin? Why was that picked? Now, in this period, after Davening, most of the shul say, Shira Malas Esa Einayel Horim, Shira Malas Mima Makim. Why don't they say, David Hashem Ori? I don't know why they don't say it, but I say it. I say it every day. And you know why that capital of Tilim is used? Because in that capital of Tilim, you have the Shem Hashem, Yud, He, Vav, He, mentioned 13 times. Count it, you'll see. And that awakens the Yud Gimel Midas of Rachamim to sweeten the day. To cancel the din as much as you can. Therefore, I say it every single day. After Shachos and after Mincha, I say. Some people say after Myrit. But I say after Mincha. And I don't know why it's not picked on. It's something with a minute Yisrael. It's brought out in the Shulchan Aruch. 
So Shira Malas is also very important. I don't say that it's not effective. But here's something that we already are in the habit of using. And it's for thousands of years already that we're using it. Why not continue it? The din didn't end. Shemini is supposed to be a time when you stop saying it and you don't need it anymore. Hoshana Rabbah is passed, the Yom HaDin is, is finished. Now we have Simchas Torah, Shemini Yatzeres. This, no, plastic. No, cultural plastic. Yeah. 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 So I think that's very important to be said at this time. And each one of us here can do it. We don't have to be dependent on what the shul does. You want to do what the shul does, fine. But you can add the David Hashem Ori every single day. That will help in some way. It's Kavzayin. Hmm? Kavzayin. Kavzayin. Also, the Tzedakah also helps. Very good. Tzedakah also helps. Giving brachas to people helps. Now, here's a very interesting thing. Yes. Are you, you listen to giving the brother some, giving us an example? Same. Just like good luck or something? Yes. Say, I wish you all the best. That? Yes, call. Sure you say know. to somebody, call too. That's it. That's a bracha. Or if he doesn't have a job, he helps. He helps you Give him a job. bracha. He should have good health. Whatever it is, give a bracha to the person. That sweetens in that makes the atmosphere, it changes, the, the atmosphere changes what's going on in the air. Now listen to this regarding, regarding brachas. Somebody sent me this, this past, this past Shabbos, Chai uh, Sora, Rav Yitzhak Gilberstein, he's a Rav in Bnei Brak, he's on the Moetzes Rabbanus Hagadol, he happens to be also the son-in-law of Rav Yashiv. And he was saying in his drasha on Shabbos a story that happened in the Yom Kippur War. I'm going to read it to you from here. I don't want to make any mistakes. Maisa that happened in Milchemes Yom Kippurim, and it's talking by a soldier who was at this happening that happened. The commander of this tank, where this soldier was in, he saw that the Mitzrayim were becoming more and more successful, and they were knocking out the tanks of Klal Yisrael in Sinai knocking the tanks out with these missiles. And he was afraid that his tank would also be next. So I don't even know if he was religious or not, this soldier. But he turned to the commander and he asked them, does anybody here know what, what Torah is? Do you know how... Jews, religious Jews, use the Torah in times of, of stress, in times of danger. So one of the soldiers said to him that his grandfather told him to say a bracha with kavana. There is a koach in a bracha of kavana to save a person from danger. So he said, my grandfather every single morning gave me something to drink so I should make a bracha shahakol near b'dvaro and afterwards he made a bari nefashos and he said the schus of the bracha will save you throughout the day from any evil. The commander heard this in the tank, this is in the Yom Kippur war, and he told all the chayalim to take something to eat, that they all had food with them in the tank, and to make a bracha with kavana. And they did it. And he says, the chain of nisim that happened to them in their tank is unbelievable. A missile hit their tank, and it hit the area where the 
fuel of the tank was stored. The fuel tank. Imagine, a missile hitting the fuel tank. What's supposed to happen? The whole thing's supposed to go up in blazes. And the missile didn't go off. It didn't explode. A second missile hit the tank, also in a very ser serious area, a sensitive area, and then also the, middle, the missile did not explode. Not only that, he says that was just two of those miracles happened one after the other. This tank was successful in knocking out many Mitzrayim tanks. You see what the koach of a bracha. But it's not just to say the bracha. It says the bracha with kavana. What does it mean the bracha with kavana? Now we're going to see how important it is. And that's why you have the sheet in front of you. I want you to all take a look at the sheet. We're going to read it together. And then we'll tell you something else is very important. The Gemara starts off in front of you, Amrav Khanan, Amrav, Hashomeya Haskaras Hashem. If someone hears a person mentioning God's name, Mipi Chavero, and it means that he's mentioning it in vain. He's not saying it with respect, he's saying it unnecessarily. Tzorech Linadoso, he should put him in excommunication for making such a mistake for doing such a vile thing, to say God's name in vain, without kavana. The Imloni do, and if he doesn't do it, he doesn't excommunicate the person, who acts mo, yehei ben He himself is worthy of being put into nidui. Why? Shekol makom shehazkaras Hashem mitsuya, wherever you have God's name present, and it's not in its proper place, it's not in its proper context. Shom Aniyas Mitsuya the Aniyas Kamisa. You'll find over there that God's name in vain brings poverty, which is equated with death. Therefore, you have to realize God's name is a very, very sensitive and powerful tool. Now, to explain it a little bit better, this is the main reason I brought this sheet, not for the Gemara itself, but for the commentary on the right side. Take a look at the right side commentary. I will read it together. Hashem me has kavas Hashem. Bereish Tmura in the Gemara in Meseches Tmura. Mavkinon azhara lemaske Hashem shemay levatola. Where do we know that you're not allowed to take God's name in vain? How do we know that? Well, you could say the Aseris of Dibros. It says, Lo sees Hashem al-Kechel right? Do not take God's name in vain. But our Gemara doesn't say in vain, la shav. It says, Levatala. Levatala. It was, he didn't say it vainly. He made a bracha. I didn't just stop and say God's name. He didn't say, Elohim, or I, Yud He didn't say it, stop. I made a bracha, so it wasn't in vain. It had a purpose. But I was Levatala because there was no Kavana. I didn't think about it. You know, it's very often you see when people make up, they have something to eat. They say the bracha so fast that you can't even hear the, hear the words, or you just hear maybe the last word. Because their intention is not the bracha, their mind is on the food. That's considered a bracha levatala. And you know, there's a minhag in Klal Yisrael. Many people do it when they have a yard site. They come to shul, and they bring what they call tikkun. The ilu nishmas, for the nifter. What's the nifter? The Israelim call it brachot, brachot, rabotai, brachot. You make a bracha for the neshama. Because this person was nifter, make, people are making brachot. So the neshama is going to get an elevation in Gan Eden, you see, because his chus, it's not only when he was alive that he had schuyot, even when he's nifter, people are making brachas because of him. Wonderful thing. But what happens if the bracha is a bracha levatala? People don't make the bracha properly. They don't have kavana when they make the bracha. They don't think, think of the Shem Hashem. What does that do to the neshama? Instead of giving the neshama an elevation, it can give him 
a demotion. So you know what? When I saw that, and I see how people make brachas, I stopped doing that minute. When I have yard site for my parents, I bring nothing to shul. Because I don't want, I'm not going to be a policeman and stand over everybody, make sure you make the brachot kavana. It's not something that people appreciate. Tell people what to do, make a brachot with kavana. What, what am I, a baby? So I don't bring, and that's all. No food, no food. When I go home, I make brachas with Kavana, the the Nishmas, I learn Mishnayas, I say Tehillim for my parents. That's what I do. But I don't want to be machshil people in making a bracha levatam. And it says here, where do we learn this from? Es Hashem Elokecha Tiwa. Look in the page, Es Hashem Elokecha Tiwa. You have to have awe for God's name. And if you make a bracha levatala, you don't have any kavana in the bracha, it's considered to be a bracha levatala. You're not showing your awesomeness for Hashem. I'll give you an example. My Rosh Hashiva told me that there was a big mashkiach, a famous mashkiach in Europe, in Mir Yeshiva, called Rabbi Yeruchim. Famous Rabbi Yeruchim. He said, when somebody mentions his name, people used to stand up. He wasn't even there. He wasn't in the room. He wasn't in the building. But they mentioned his name. People stood up because of his name. Just imagine, that's a human being. If you had mentioned God's name, and you could have mentioned God's name, Levatala, without Kavana. That's what he says the Rad is, the Makar, the reason why we have to be careful. Because it says, as a Shem Elokechatira, you have to have a feeling of awe for God and even his name. Oh, yeah. If you bring like a lot for someone's like like you it's in your side and they don't do wrong, like, like, but you're doing the efforts, like you're like let's say someone gives Sadaka and they, and so to someone and they're just um Spending in on like cigarettes or alcohol, you, you, you're still you still get the mitzvah of giving them tzedakah. Well, yes, you are. You you did your part. You did your part. You gave the the, the tzedakah. However, if you know that he's going to use it to buy cigarettes or for some other you know, foolishness, you you can make a condition with him. I'm giving you the tzedakah on the condition that you buy food. You use it for clothing, things which are really necessary, and under no circumstances am I giving it to you for cigarettes or any other foolishness. You can make that condition with it. Or you can just directly buy him the food. Or, or yeah, you could do that too, that's right. Yeah. Okay, let's go further. And if your person, you hear the person saying Hashem's name in vain, so to speak, and you don't censure him, you, then you yourself deserve to be. So he says, Lo she ain't neither me a love. He says, not really that you sh- you're actually going to be put into excommunication. Ela ra'u, you're worthy of it. This not just kama. Shere e'no chamor ha'shomea v'shosek y'masker atzma. You can't be many worse off than the person who said it. And he wasn't put in, so you certainly shouldn't be put in either. But you're worthy of being put in some kind of excommunication because you also are not showing the respect to the name. Now look at what he says here, very important. Listen to this. The Gemara is giving now a reason why you have to be so cautious with Hashem's name. Listen to this. Sharei Ancho Chamur because the results of God's name in vain, all of Atala, are very, very severe. The Sham Aniyos Mitsuya, you can cause somebody to lose his money. He can become poor. Wherever God's name is mentioned, it brings bracha. Umidahaskaras Hashem, the mitzvah may be a bracha of the 
And when you use God's name with respect, as you should, it brings bracha and osha and wealth. Hazachira l'shav goremes anius. The opposite is true when the bracha is not said with intention with kavana. So here you have a formula for a possible way to avoid poverty. Make sure always to say Hashem's name with kavana. That means we who say hundreds of brachas a day. Shmon Esve is 19 brachas three times a day. Plus Birchas HaMazon, plus Shakol, Netilas Yedayim, Rasher Yatsa. We make all the time brachas every single day. Do yourself, do the world, do the Tzava HaGanel Yisrael. Do Klal Yisrael a favor. Make the bracha with kavana. Take an extra second or two to think of what you're saying. You're saying God's name. It has so much power. It brings wealth and it brings bracha. And our soldiers need a lot of bracha, need a lot of protection. Just like we learned before, like the soldiers in the tank. They need a lot. They are in an extremely, extremely dangerous place. And everything we do, these are our brothers. We come from the same parents. Everything we do, our neshamas are connected to theirs. They don't have to know it. They don't have to see it. But everything we do that's good is a protection for them. And this is one of the easiest things that we can do. Saying a bracha with a little more patience, slower, kavana. You can't imagine what is the effect. Like the soldiers in the tank. And there it worked. In the middle of the war. In the middle of the war in Sinai. In a tank and they'd be attacked by other, by Egyptian missiles. Their tank wasn't harmed at all, even though two missiles hit the tank. Imagine that. And one hit the fuel tank of the tank, and it didn't go off. Nice good though. Nice good though. And they were successful at knocking out other tanks because of the brachas that they made. There was no other explanation. The commander of the tank said, everyone pick up something and make a bracha. And I'm sure they made the bracha with kavana because they knew this is it. It's life or death. There's nothing else. No, when you say no atheist in a foxhole. They were in a foxhole. Can you put a mezuzah in a tank? It's a low buy, no You know, you could, but you're not going to make a bracha on it. No, not a bracha. You could make it, you could put a bracha, you could take it, you could take it inside, you should be sure you could do it. Of course, you could do it. I don't know if it's the same, what the koach is. It's not going to hurt, for sure. For sure it's not going to hurt. Put a take the mezuzah with you. Not going to hurt. All right. That is the first thing. And it's so, so apropos for our learning. We're learning all the time about the kavanas and the Baal Shem Tov is teaching kavana, kavana, kavana all the time. The kavana we're going to see, uh, I don't know if we'll get to it today, we'll see how basic it is. It's so basic. It's not only basic, it's the, it's the, the, it's the top of everything. It's the pinnacle of everything. It's so vital, so vital the kavana. That's where you connect with Hashem. All right. That's one thing. The second thing is also very, very important. And this, this is also said over by Rav Zilberstein this week on Shabbos. There used to be a Dayan in London and who he came eventually here in his old age to retire. He lived in Baitagan with Yecheskel Abramsky. Tesla Bramsky was a Dayan, a big Talmud Chacham, one of the Gedol of the Gedor. And before he came here, he was a Dayan in, uh, in London. 
there was a couple who were having difficulty and they came to the Bezdin, get divorced, not get divorced. Eventually they saw they cannot make a go out of it. So there was a agreement upon both of them. The best thing is we better separate. Okay. Now I don't know exactly at what point this was in London, maybe World War II. I don't know exactly when it was. The story was that they came to the Besden, and in those days, the Bate Dinim in London were like the Supreme Court with the best furniture, with the most ornamental surroundings, very, very honorable. The judges, the Dayanim, set up on a pedestal, on a higher platform. It was really something very mukhubad. But these two came, so I guess they came to sit down with the Rav, the Av Bezdin, the Abramsky. So he was sitting at one side of the table, and the couple was on the other side of the table. All of a sudden, a missile hit them and went into the room where they were sitting. And the couple were killed instantly. And sitting at the same table, was Yevichesko Labramsky on the other side of the table, not a hair on his head was singed. Nothing. Nothing. So they said, it's a nice, it's a nice, you're sitting at the same table, the bomb goes <coughs> off, and the other side that wiped out immediately, and you're sitting on this side of the table, such a difference? How could it be? Something should have happened. Some kind of, I don't know, wind or bang or something. You weren't affected at all. So he said, no, it's not a nice. I say every morning the following Pusik, and everybody has it in this city. If you want to see where the Pusik is inside, write it down on a piece of paper that you have and take the paper home with you. It's in Lamid Vav in Tehillim Pusik Ches. Lamid Vav Pasakes. And the Pasak is, you should know it from your putting on your talus in the morning. And the Pasak is, Mayakar Chastacha Elohim, Ubne Adam Betzel Kinafecha Yechesayu. In this Siddur, the Chabad Siddur, and the other Siddurim, this is written after you put on your talus in the morning. You said 26? Lamed Vav. Ah, 36. Lamed Vav Pasaches. If you look in most of the Zedorim, after you put on your talus in the morning and you are wrapped in your talus, it says this Nusach, this Pasach is brought in the Siddur. Mayako chastacha Elohim uvinei Adam betzel kanafecha yechesoyu. How precious is your kindness, Hashem. And people are wrapped in your wings. And they have faith in you because you're holding them un under your wings. It's like a child who's picked up by his parents, a baby, he's picked up by his parents. His feet are no longer on the ground. He realizes he has no, no independence anymore. All he has is the arms of his parents who are holding him. And he feels totally, totally comforted and happy. If he's unhappy before, now he's happy. If he's crying before, now he'll stop crying. Why? Because he knows he's in good hands. His parents love him. His parents will protect him. And they're holding him. This is what this Pasuk says. When you're being wrapped in the talus, this heftza of mitzvah, with its tzitzis, you are under the wings, so to speak, of Hashem. And he's protecting you. And that protection will be for 24 hours until you say it again the next morning. So he said, that's why I wasn't harmed when the bomb went off right across the table from me. Because I said that with a lot of kavana. After you put on the colors in the morning, if you haven't said it until now, now is the time to start saying it you are feeling the protection of Hashem around you, encompassing you, 
wrapping you under his wing, so to speak. It's like a father holding on to his child. The child feels totally, totally protected and content. And if you have that bitachon, that's the faith, that the moon and Hashem, he'll come through. He'll come through for you. And he'll protect you for 24 hours. That's what Bechezkel Abramsky said is the reason that he wasn't harmed by that bomb. Is there, is there a way to send this, this plus on WhatsApp? Or? I could put it on WhatsApp. Well, Mordechai here is going to put it on YouTube. It'll be there tonight. It'll be there. It's not the same. It's not because it's not Makif Kamal. It's not Makif Kamal. Also, like I, I feel like also like. I, I but Abacham, you put, you have it for twenty-four hours. Okay, you could no. So you wear that at night too. Some people may sleep it since as well. But it's not. No, at least uh, all right. a day long. All right. But the tell us God for sure, yeah. I feel like, like because of the war I'm increasing and then it's stuck up, so I feel like maybe it's protecting me. Very good. Keep it up. Keep it up. It's also mom took the din. It's a wonderful thing. Tzedakah is one of the big things that sweetens the din. It's a giving to others. It's a considering others. It's giving away. And that's amazing. It's amazing koach that tzedakah has to the bottom of the din. Keep it up. Even if it's only a small amount, it doesn't matter. It's the giving to others. That's what does it. Okay. So we have very important information. And I hope that we'll all be able to make use of it. Okay. I, I want to go back to the Baal Shem Tov now. And it's a continuation, actually, of what we're speaking about, the Kavana, and how important it is. And the Baal Shem Tov is always trying to impress upon us how... The tefillah is such a powerful tool. It's not only it's such powerful, it's packed with, with, with energy. I can't explain, I mean, find the words to explain what we're doing when we're davening properly. He says the following. You have to realize that the feeling that you have, that you're going to speak to God, should be so overwhelming that you don't even feel that you're worthy of beginning to speak. You need Hashem to help you to open your mouth. When you say, Baruch Ato Hashem, in the morning, Go'al Yisrael, you are the Redeemer, you took us out of Mitzrayim, you made Nisim, ten miracles which were, uh, are beyond understanding, how all those miracles took place. Imagine, Makos Bechoros. Can you imagine what Makos Bechoros means? Exactly the same moment throughout the entire world of, Mitz of Mitzrayim. There are millions of people. And there was not one house that didn't have a dead person in it. And they all died instantly at the same time. Can you imagine what that is? That's normal? Can you explain that away by some kind of natural means? That in every house one person dies at least? And all at the exact same moment? It's Marcus Bechoros. Hashem did that. Hashem did it. And that same Hashem is the one we are talking to. He has the koach of life, of death, of brocha, of atzlacha. You feel that you're worthy to, to speak to Shatzah Melech? Are you worthy to speak to Shatzah Melech? If you're really saying the Kriya Shema like you should, and you're saying all the things between Kriya Shema and Shemona Esrei, and then you have to actually get in there and say, can you do it? It's expected and completely normal and natural to feel that I am not worthy. I can't. I can't do it. Hashem, if you want me to speak, you gave me a mitzvah, the David. If you want me to speak, I need your help. To start me off. Start me off. Open the door for me. That's why you say, Adonai Sifasai Tiftach. You, Hashem, open up my mouth. You open up my mouth. Then I can praise you. I can't do it on my own. Impossible. I cannot do it. 
I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I need you to help me. I need you to help me. So when you say that, says the Baal Shem Tov, you have to realize that you are opening the door for the Shechina to come into you and give you that urge, that impetus, the ability to open up your lips and say the words Baruch. Without that, if you're not worthy, you can't do it. It's too great. Hashem is too huge. I can't do it. Who am I? A simple, simple person. Who am I to address such a king? Who am I? You need Hashem to help you. The Shechina comes into you when you say those words. You're asking, you're inviting the Shechina. I don't know. If it's not, you open up my mouth. If it's not, tiftach, you open up my lips. And then I'll be able to verbalize and say some praise to you. I can't even praise you. Me, who am I to praise? Who am I to, to ask you for something is something way beyond my, my, my imagination to ask you for anything. But even to praise you, I don't feel worthy. You need Hashem to open up your lips. That shows He wants to hear. If you open up my lips, Hashem, that means you want to hear. That means that I feel a little bit better. Now I can start. I can start. And Hashem is doing a great thing. He is, in a sense, His vastness. He is willing it, willing to sort of make it very, very localized and come into you. Take, sort, of, add, add, sort of is taking away from His vastness and bothering with a little old person like you. That's also something which we have very, be very appreciative of. Because to think about all of the millions and millions and millions of details and people that there are in the world, you want him to come personally to you and give you the attention that you asked. That is also something to be very appreciative of. You have to realize these things. And it's all in the mind. It's all in the mind. A person who feels this way and realizes this way compared to a person who knows nothing about these thoughts. To him, coming to shul is just a routine, mechanical, every single day operation. That's all it is. It's, it doesn't have these thoughts at all. It starts, finishes, he's got one foot out the door before you say it, he's God. The two people went to shul, both wearing a talus, both wearing trillin. They're a million miles apart. A million miles apart. And it's all because of what's in the mind. That's what really counts. It's all what's in the mind. So I'm hoping, I really, with all my heart, I'm hoping that these words are not going to be ended with the shear at 12 o'clock. These words are going to stay with you in your heart, in your mind, and you're going to apply it. This is not, not me. I have the schus of the Baal Shem Tov. I'm going to tell you, I have this safer in my house, the Baal Shem Tov, all right, 20 years. And once in a while, I would pick it up to see Dvar Torah here and there. And a few years ago, I decided to myself, you know, maybe I should learn it from the beginning to the end, slowly, and see what he has to say. And then I came to this parasha of Noah, where he starts to talk about this whole section on Tefillah. I says, where have I been all these years? Where have I been all these years? Why I waste the time? Why Noah? Because it's why Pashas Noah? Because over there it says Boal Ateva. Boa Toba Khunishtava. Ateva is a word, not only its ark. Come into the words. Be part of the words. Go into the words. See what the depth of the words are. That's why he's, oh, he does it over there. And I thank Hashem for giving me this inspiration. Even at a few years ago, most of my life has already passed. I've been in yeshiva since I'm four years old, and I never had the Baal Shem Tov. I was never taught the Baal Shem Tov beforehand, although I had it. If I got smicha, I had a litvashir, Rosh Yeshiva. I got smicha and all that. 
but I never really understood what tefillah is until I started learning about Shem Tov, and I started at a late age and I thank God that I started at that time and then Rabbi Goldberg came along to me one day a few years ago and he says would you like to give shir for us he says a spesim charaba people who want to learn Torah I'm willing to teach says, what do you want to teach I said this is what I want to teach I want to teach the tefillah of the tefillah sheet is about Shem Tov Wonderful. He was very happy. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. We benefit greatly around this. And I'm so thankful for you also, because I wouldn't want to talk to the wall. <laughs> I'd have to have someone to talk to. Talk to the man. So, Baal Shem Tov says that. Uh, there are different levels in Shemayim, different levels. And at each level, just like you said, at the lowest level, Hashem said, open up my lips so that I can praise you, I can utter some words to you. So you go to the first level, but there are other levels. And before each level, they are overlooking your tick, as we say. Are you worthy to go to the next level? It's not a one-time thing. The one-time thing is to start you off to go into the lowest level. But as you grow up in Shemayim, there are more and more deeper and inner areas to get to. And at each level, you are again have to go through an appraisal to see if you are worthy to go higher and higher and higher. V'im haya, it says the Baal Shem Tov, ha'ada meisin elibo, shedonu nasa be'es and nafalo makshav azara. And if a person would put to his mind, take seriously, what is going on in Shemayim when a extraneous thought enters your mind? When you're supposed to be totally, totally connected. What are they saying about you when you have some ridiculous thought in your mind at this time. Where your thoughts are is where you're connecting. And now this enters your mind? What are they thinking about you? If you would have that in the back of your mind, Bavadai says the Bashem Tov, Hoyimispalo with Kavana, you would do everything possible to avoid that criticism. You don't want to be criticized by the Olam Israel Yonim. Hello, what? The person's not aware, doesn't know, he hasn't been informed. So he's a Nebuch. He's a Nebuch. But we do know now. At least our little group, we do know now. And therefore, the hope is we're going to take extra, extra care to make sure before we start the Shemona Esrei that we're ready. How do we do that? We stand up straight, we adjust our clothing before you go into a minister, before you go into an important person that you want to impress. You make sure you dress properly, you make sure your clothes are on straight, you make sure you have the words to say that are proper, you go over your speech beforehand. That's only to a human being. To Melech Melchayim Lachim, you shouldn't do the same. Kalvachomer. Certainly you should do the same. Says the Baal Shem Tov. When a extraneous thought enters your mind, so first of all, what are you supposed to be saying to yourself? When this happens, that means you have to say to yourself, I didn't prepare myself properly. The fact that this could happen at such a time that means I didn't prepare myself properly. And I should be embarrassed, ashamed of myself. How can I say the words and not have kavana? How can I do that? How can I allow these thoughts to come in? That means I did not make the proper hachana. I didn't make the proper hachana before I started Shmon Esrei. If you make the proper hachana before the chances of it happening are much, much less. Much, much less. Because you're really veered up. You're reared up, you're ready to talk. You're standing there 
tense, I'm going to speak to Hashem. And when you have that frame of mind, you're going to try to do thing, everything perfectly. You make sure that's the way you start Shmon Esri. So you say to myself, but Shmon Esri is going to take me a long time if I go this way. So I say to you, what are you here in this world for? What are you here for? To start and finish in two minutes? That's what you came down here for? That's what you came down here for. Do the way you're supposed to do. It takes you longer, it takes you longer. So what? So you finish five minutes later. So what? But you're doing the right thing. Since the time I started learning about Shem Tov, I will tell you, Shmon Esrei takes me 20 minutes. By the time I finish Shmon Esrei, they're just about saying already Aleinu. So I miss Kedusha with them. I miss Birchus Kodim. I'm there, so I get the bracha. Anyone in, in the shul gets the Birchus Kodim. You're standing there. And all the connect. So what? I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. It takes me longer. So it takes me longer. So what? Why did I come down to this world for? To, to do everything like a machine? That's what I'm here for? That's why Hashem gave me intelligence? That's why He gave me such a big neshama? To do everything like a, like a machine? Waste my time here? What am I doing here? So it takes me 20 minutes. What? I smile to everybody. Shalom, how are you? Have a good day. That's it. I do my thing. The Nidhi Bar Shem Tov says an amazing statement. And it's such a powerful statement. Such a powerful statement. You have to hear this statement. Your communication with Hashem is so intimate, it's so high, it's so holy, when an extraneous thought comes into your mind, it's like having a mamza. That's what he says. Mamza. A mamza. An extraneous thought, when you're having an intimate relationship with Hashem, it's like husband and wife in the most intimate times. A stranger comes in, that stranger is considered like a mamzer. This is the words, I'm reading it from the Baal Shem Tov. <clears throat> a strenuous thought. You're saying the words of the Shemona Ezrei, and you're thinking about something else. It's like a mamzer. That's his, how come a mamzer? Remember those words. Remember those words. It's a, amazing. It gives us something to really, really, you know, something we can identify with. We understand what a mamza means. You have a matrimonial relationship of kedusha. Why do we call our marriage kedushin? It's not just an agreement, a civil agreement, where a man and wife, a man and woman, decide they're going to live together. So they go out to a civil marriage. No, 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 no. That doesn't work in Judaism. Our marriage is called Kedusha. It's sealed with holiness. Sealed with holiness. It's nobody else's business. It's just me and my wife to exclude everybody else. Anybody else mixing in? That's adultery. That's mamzerus. This is about Shem Tov. That's the way we have to think of tefillah. We are like the wives of a Kodesh Baruch Hu in a sense. Hashem, of course, is the male, and Am Yisrael is the female. We are married to Hashem in a marriage relationship of Kedusha. How can we allow any intervention from foolishness to get in the middle of that relationship? That's considered like a mamza. Amazing, amazing thought, amazing thought. So when we start Shmona Esrei, Mehayom Vahala, if we haven't done it until now, let's try to really get our act together and start it off properly and go all the way through and end it properly. And then after davening, take a deep breath. Wow. 
sit down and relax for a minute. Because you've been through something, something very, very pressurizing. And it's worthy. But that will end today. Call to Rabbi Sayyid.